check if the blue line. Easily and accurately ascertaining the identity of individuals is what biometric systems are all about. They do that identifying based on physiological characteristics like, but not limited to, fingerprints, iris patterns, or facial features. Given today's ever-escalating security and safety challenges, the application of those technologies has greatly expanded. Now extensively used by the government and the private sector, biometric systems are a significant component of the essential and ongoing effort to safeguard the United States and its people. It is imperative that biometric systems be continually and innovatively improved as their applications are widened. That is precisely what scientists at the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST, are doing. Partnering with the Department of Homeland Security, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and virtually every other agency that has biometrics as a core part of its mission. They are putting NIST's long experience in the field of human identification systems to good use. NIST has been working in the area of biometrics for over 40 years. With the events of 9-11, uh, we all had a wake-up call and, and realized that uh, Homeland Security needed to uh, be greatly improved. And biometric technologies was identified as a, a, a key enabling technology. And so with our track record, uh, we found ourselves uh, very quickly in the middle of a government-wide effort to collect more biometrics, higher quality biometrics, to share that data appropriately across agencies, and to make sure that the systems that are in place are, are, are accurate and reliable. In regards to biometrics, security and safety, they go hand in hand, and so Biometrics, they're, they're used for controlling access to a facility, securing a facility, uh, protecting access to computer networks, uh, combating fraud, uh, fighting crime, uh, screening uh, people at borders. And in terms of safety, biometrics can help with identity management for people like first responders, uh, at the scene of natural disasters, for the soldier in theater, for border patrol, and for the police officer on the street. Biometric standards and their guidance are vital to build effective biometric systems. And the standards that we work on help to provide open exchange of data between agencies and their systems, which are built by different companies. It also helps to define methods for performance testing. And then one really important aspect of biometric standards is interoperability. And in other words, um, making sure that all the government's biometric systems work well together. And beyond that, standards are good for commerce. They result in greater innovation by private industry and they help to lower barriers for new companies to enter the market. The activities that we're highlighting today are a few of uh, many activities that are going on in biometrics at NIST. Originally, we were approached by Transportation Security Administration, TSA, and they needed to collect some irises for an iris recognition evaluation. When you're doing a data collection, the sensors are pretty cheap, right? It's, it's the time that you get people to come in, present their biometrics, explain to everything. So, so there's a large investment. So it turned out we're like, well, if we're taking irises, well, let's take uh, face as well. And oh, if you're taking iris and face, might as well take fingerprint too. And what happened was we realized that there really isn't anything out there that would allow us to easily choose different vendors, different manufacturers, different sensors. So we built it ourselves. What they built was a set of software libraries from which people could create advanced multimodal biometric applications with a range of benefits, including a very surprising one. A major advantage of Embark is that it's public domain. Anyone can take these libraries and do anything they want with it. They can commercialize it, they can put it into a product. It's often used in um, research labs all across, uh, actually all across the world. Biometrics usability is the study of biometric systems so that we can understand the extent to which 
how users use a product with efficiency, effectiveness, and user satisfaction to achieve their goals in a specified context of use. That context of use is obvious at U.S. ports of entry. There, NIST research has strongly impacted how U.S. visit is implemented, especially in taking fingerprints. Height angle research has led to U.S. visit angling the uh, scanners on all of their counters in all of their airports. This adjustment in the fingerprint taking process, one of many adjustments suggested by NIST after careful study, has resulted in making that process more convenient for both visitors and customers and Border Patrol officers. It has also improved the quality of the fingerprint image. Another result of NIST research was the simplifying of critical instruction symbols and pictograms pertaining to the fingerprint process. In a situation where most visitors don't speak English, these had to be both perfectly clear and culturally sensitive. And in many cultures, hand signals can mean so many different things and have such cultural differences. And so we have to be so careful with hand gestures. And so fingerprint symbols can be so culturally sensitive that we really had to study these issues and come down with very precise uh, pictograms and symbols to, to define these individual steps. Before we had way too much information, way too many abstract pictograms, and so we've greatly simplified our symbols. And um, now we've really increased throughput tremendously because we've just uh, simplified the whole process. There's two major varieties of fingerprints. There's latent fingerprints and conventional fingerprints. Latent fingerprints are collected forensically off of surfaces, off from residual marks on surfaces. Conventional fingerprints are directly captured from fingers using ink or live scan devices. Latent fingerprints tend to have less area and less, um, lesser quality than conventional fingerprints, which makes them harder to match. Whether conventional or latent fingerprints, agencies like the FBI and Homeland Security want to capture and match them faster, more accurately, and with less human intervention in order to both apprehend more criminals and stop terrorists before they can enter the country. Scientists at NIST are evaluating fingerprint matching technologies designed to do just that. Their work has wide-ranging benefits. In my view, when you conduct evaluations of technology in an open manner, you're actually stimulating improvements to that technology, you're, you're promoting competition in the marketplace, and you're informing the consumer of those technologies. By evaluating these technologies and ranking them, you're allowing government agencies such as Homeland Security or FBI to, to make better purchasing decisions. We're also putting out a lot of detailed information about the characteristics of these technologies so that they, when they do put these into operation, they can use them in an optimal way. Biometric sample quality, the way we define it, is about the matchability of a biometric sample. Uh, a sample is of good quality if it can be matched correctly and the expected uh, recognition error of a good quality sample is low. A sample is of bad quality if it results in a higher uh, recognition error. Fundamentally then, the key to biometric systems effectively carrying out their function is the quality of the captured image. Assessing that quality and developing standards for such assessment plays a vital role in improving the performance of biometric systems, in improving their accuracy and efficiency during the capture process. This in turn leads to greater system level accuracy in national databases so critical to the nation's security. If quality can be improved either by sensor design or by better capture conditions or by compliance to some standards, better performance can be achieved. For those aspects of quality that cannot be designed in, a mechanism to measure quality is necessary. There is a need for a standardized uh, and interoperable way of measuring and exchanging quality scores. And that has been the bulk and the focus of the biometric quality program at NISD. Uh, we have been working with international uh, uh, standard organizations to develop uh, uh, standards for uh, storing and measuring quality uh, scores. These are just samplings of the biometric activities of NIST scientists. There are many others. All are aimed at developing, honing, testing, and evaluating biometric standards and systems. And all help ensure that taxpayer dollars spent on biometrics deliver accurate, reliable systems 
that work to keep this country and its citizens safe.